Excellency Ms. Lorena Tapia, Minister of the Environment of Ecuador, Executive Secretary of the CMS, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I am very pleased to join you for the 11th meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on the Conservation of Migratory Species of Wild Animals. We live today in a world characterized by trends of climate change that exert enormous pressures on our ecosystems, affecting not only life systems, but also the natural resource base that sustains life on Earth. These impacts affect human society as well as other species in our ecosystem, including migratory species which face serious threats such as loss of natural habitats, breeding grounds, and migratory routes. The impacts of climate change also expose migratory species to new emerging threats that we have yet to fully understand, increasing droughts, land degradation, and lack of access to reliable energy sources lead to anthropogenic encroachments in search of food and biomass for energy on the habitats and migration routes of wildlife. Dealing with climate change and the urgent need to address energy, food and water security means that we must take serious steps now towards efficient and sustainable use of our resources. Accelerated and sustainable deployment of renewable energy provides part of the answer to this global challenge. The fifth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change shows that the deployment of renewable energy will need to more than triple by 2050 if we are to fight climate change and keep global warming increase to below 2 degrees centigrade. This calls for massive deployment of renewables, requires substantial investments and calls for new paradigm shifts from our business as usual approach to date. IRENA's REMAP 2030, the roadmap for doubling the share of renewable energy in the global energy mix by 2030, as called for by the UN Secretary General's Sustainable Energy for All initiative, has shown that decarbonizing our economies and providing clean, sustainable energy is not only feasible with existing technologies, but is also affordable. Increased deployment of renewable energy also creates jobs, supports local value chains, diversifies the energy mix, and offers health benefits in terms of air quality. So renewables and their associated infrastructure are an essential aspect of the green growth we need now and into the future. But we need to better understand the complexities of energy supply and how it affects or could affect wildlife, especially migratory species, be it for energy generation from renewable or fossil fuel and nuclear energy sources, or for roads, railway lines, and other linear infrastructure. It's therefore timely and appropriate that the secretaries of the CMS, BirdLife International, and IRENA have come together to work on a joint project that aims to do exactly that. You have been presented with preliminary draft outputs from our joint project on renewable energy deployment and migratory species, namely the overview report and the review of guidelines for effective implementation of renewables. The work highlights the importance of the mitigation hierarchy of avoidance, minimization, mitigation, offsetting or compensation when dealing with potential negative impacts of renewable energy deployment and migratory species, and the need for including these species in strategic environmental assessments. The report also identifies gaps in knowledge that presently exist on how large-scale deployment of renewable energy does or can impact on migratory species. Over time, we will close these knowledge gaps through increased and focused research based on scientific evidence and observations. This will better inform decision-making in support of the accelerated deployment of renewable energy that we must achieve to mitigate climate change and support green growth, done in a way that is reconcilable to the protection of migratory species. At the project level, the improved knowledge that should help streamline environmental imp impact assessments of renewable energy projects. But the outputs from our joint project are works in progress that we must continue to work on for improvement before final publication in the very near future. 
any guidelines for effective deployment of renewable energy technologies in a way that is sensitive to migratory species must continuously evolve and be informed by lessons learned from increased deployment of renewables and sharing of best practice, making use of the various tools available from a number of stakeholders. Modeling, GIS and mapping tools such as IRENA's Global Atlas, the Critical Site Network tool and the BirdLife's Soaring Bird Sensitivity Map provide helpful instruments that combine information about migratory pathways and sites for identification and assessment of potential renewable energy deployment locations. The IRENA Global Atlas also provides a platform for bringing all of these multiple tools together to inform planning for deployment of renewables that is sensitive to migratory species. All of these tools have been developed by various stakeholders coming together to cooperate on, an, on a common purpose. The theme of your 11th Conference of Parties meeting, Time for Action, couldn't have been more timely and compelling. It is time for us all to work together to fight climate change and promote green growth while protecting our natural environment. Thank you for your invitation to me to address your Conference of Parties. Unfortunately, the timing overlaps with our ARENA Council meetings and does not allow me to join you personally on this occasion. I wish you successful deliberations and I look forward to our continued cooperation. Thank you very much.